All right, so this is Bosch's 10-piece 18 volt combo kit. And what we're gonna do is talk about the value of this combo kit as a whole, and then have an individual look at every single tool we get in this combo kit. I've been using this for a couple days now. I've done a few tests and had a good use out of every single tool here. Um, so I'll let you know what I think of them. All right, so this combo kit does cost $2,000 AUD. So it's very similar in price to most brands other 18 volt 10 piece combo kits. I think the first thing, the main thing we wanna look at is the amount of useful tools we have. And in terms of useful tools, I'm talking about tools that you can actually use to build stuff and do things with. So that means we won't be talking about the torch, the blower, and the radio. So in Bosch's case, we'll rule out those three tools, and that means we are left with seven useful, powerful tools. It's definitely the main thing I look for in the 10 piece combo kit. Most 10 piece combo kits have between six and seven useful tools. Bosch do get extra points though, and we'll have a good look into this impact driver later. But this is almost a two-in-one tool. We do have the impact driver, but on the end, it's also got the attachment for socket bits too. So you can use this as an impact driver and impact wrench. I've recently done a standalone video covering that, doing a fair few tests on that, and we will have a look at that one in a second. Now, similar to most 18 volt combo kits, it comes with three 18 volt 5 amp batteries. All right, so we'll work our way through the tools. We'll start from this side and make our way across. Um, the first tool I have here is the blower. And honestly, it's not a good start from Bosch. This is probably the worst battery blower I've ever felt. Now, first off, initially, as soon as I grab it, there's no trigger. It feels so wrong holding a blower with no trigger. We just have this switch at the top here that we can push on and off. One benefit to that is that you can just turn it on and leave it on. There are a lot of battery blowers where you have to always be manually holding that trigger for it to be blowing. So that's definitely useful. But apart from that, the tool does work all right. Behind it, we've got the torch as well. We'll get this one out of the way. There's not a lot to talk about with this one. Obviously, with the battery in, you can just sit it upright, maneuver the torch to any position you really want. A torch like this, it's not worth much. It will come in handy um, time to time when you are working in dark environments. It definitely is handy, but it's just an extra tool they do throw in to say it's a 10-piece combo kit. You're definitely not buying the combo kit to get a torch. So we'll jump into this orbital sander. This is the first useful tool in the combo kit. And I've said this a few times in a few different videos, this is actually the best orbital sander I've ever felt. We'll chuck a battery in it. And that handhold, that size of the orbital sander is bloody awesome. We did have a look in the bag before too. It does come, it does come with a little attachment we can put on there. And that makes it the right size for this little dust bag here as well. This is definitely the lightest, the best handle. It's one of the best feeling orbital sanders I've ever used. If we turn it on though, the max setting doesn't seem too powerful. It's still gonna sand, it's still gonna do the job, but it doesn't have as much guts as other orbital sanders. That aside though, just the weight and how nice it feels to hold this orbital sander wins so many points in my books. If you're doing architraves, you're holding it above your head all day. This sander is awesome. Behind it, we've got the Bosch hammer. This is called the Bulldog. So I did a video on the main channel, working a day in the life using these tools. One thing I did notice is when I was doing Dyna bolts and drilling into the ground, it's too awkward to use both hands. I'm definitely holding one hand on the trigger, the other hand on the battery, pushing down. But today I was doing a few dyna bolts into brickwork and it's such a good build for when you're holding it in front of you, pushing it into a wall. Even though I wasn't using this handle, pushing it into the ground, I still had a good grip holding the battery and the trigger, uh, kind of like this, and it didn't kick on me at all. There was a few times where the drill bit started to get stuck and I never had an issue with it kicking. We'll jump through to the grinder. Uh, one thing I critique in a lot of grinders is, is when they've got this little switch on the side to turn the grinders on, I love the grinder where you've actually got the paddle and the safety trigger there to hold down and as soon as you release, the grinder's gonna turn off. Even though I don't like these for a safety element, um, I think Bosch have done this the best. Even It's not even really a safety element. It's You wanna hold a grinder with two hands to turn this on, you gotta take a hand off the grinder, turn it on with one finger like that, hold it on again, and I mean, it's not too hard to turn it off afterwards, but I just love the idea of holding the grinder and as you're holding it, it turns on, you release it and it turns off. Bosch have done this one well because once you push up, that little switch starts to stick out a little bit at the bottom there. So I don't have to actually pull it down. All I gotta do is tap that very lightly and it's gonna turn off. So in terms of switches, I think Bosch have done it the best. Apart from that, there's nothing very special about this grinder. It cuts, it does the job. It's not a tool that blows my mind. It doesn't feel amazing, but it does what it needs to do. This saw, on the other hand, has blown me away. It is such a good saw by Bosch. For starters, it is an unusual shape. It's small, but it's very long compared to wide. In terms of width, it's definitely one of the most condensed saws I've used. 
I've had a few issues using it just in terms of line of sight, trying to sight through and see the blade. Um, obviously, if you're using it on this other side of your body, it's perfect. You can easily see that. But I, had, uh, but I have had a few issues trying to use it, holding it in awkward spots above my head, and I'm trying to move around to see where that blade hits the timber. Top of that, I don't think this would be a huge concern, but the distance from the saw blade to the front of the guard is bigger than most saws. Because it's long, the front of the saw does stick out a bit further. And I've had a few instances where I was trying to cut stuff and I'd butt it into a bit of timber and I had to finish a cut off for the reset. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it's just a little thing I noticed with the saw. Apart from that, it does really well for a small saw. I really was not expecting much when I got that saw and it has blown me away. Behind it, we've got Bosch's uh, reset. This thing is probably too big for an 18 volt reset. The body of this reset is huge. It feels pretty clunky and awkward to hold when you hold it at the front here. We do have an inbuilt rafter hook, which is nice. It's a bit awkward to flick out, um, but it works well. It's a good size. So next up is the drill and driver. We might actually just start with the drill. I've um, done a few tests on a lot of these tools head to head with other brands on my channel. The drill wasn't anything special, um, but it is enough to do the job. We do have our two different gears that we can go between on the drill. We've also got the option between drill, driving screws, and then also hammer drill as well. This feels very similar to a lot of drills on the market. It doesn't have a heap of power behind it, but from memory when I did a few tests, the batteries seemed to last a while while using the drill. Actually, I think I did the test in the impactor to be more precise, and I was just driving screws in and out for a while. And I'll need to recheck it, but I'm pretty sure the Bosch did rank really well when I was just continuously using the tool over and over again. So this does lead us onto the impact driver slash impact wrench. Um, I just did a full video on it. And in the video, it was a separate review. We did test things such as how quick it drives bugle screws. I just went to, after that, I tried testing a few concrete screws. We put a socket on it. And I firstly did a Dyna bolt, then I did a 75 mil concrete screw, 100 mil, and then a 12 mil by 150 mil concrete screw. So that video definitely goes into more depth about this tool. But the one thing I got from it is that it's more designed almost as an impact wrench. It's got more torque behind it. It's slower at driving timber screws. So if you're doing timber screw after timber screw and doing heaps of work, it's gonna be a little bit slower, but it can handle doing bolts and doing a bit more high load jobs such as concrete screws and tightening bolts and working as an impact wrench. One thing I don't like about it is there is nothing on it to change it from different settings, different gears. You're stuck on the one mode the entire time. Obviously, depending on how hard you press the trigger, you can adjust that slightly, but I would love to see a, different, a few different modes, especially because we want to go from an impact wrench to an impact driver. There's so many different tasks requiring, requiring different torques, so it'd be nice to have a few different modes on that. Lastly, we do have the Bosch radio. It's a good looking radio, nice and easy to carry around the work site. I'm trying to open it up for the first time. I actually haven't opened up this radio yet at all, and we got an aux cord in there, which is good. The one thing I'm looking for, and I think it may be in this box, is if, yeah, th there we go, is if we had a wall plug. We do, and that's the main thing I really care about when we get a radio and a combo kit like this. If we're just getting three batteries, we, cannot really, we don't really have the option to sacrifice a battery to the radio. That means we've got two batteries to work in our tools, and as soon as the tool dies, we put one on charge, we can't work anymore. So overall, as a combo kit, I wasn't expecting a lot from Bosch. I wasn't expecting this to be great. But I honestly was surprised. There were a few tools such as the impact saw and the orbital sander that really blew me away. They were a lot better than what I was expecting. The other tools which I didn't rate as highly, such as the thicker resip or the grinder, they're still completely fine to be using on the site all the time. So I don't see Bosch on site as much and it does seem like they've started to really perfect the tools and making them better and better. I do think this tool is great to use. I'm talking in a carpenter's perspective. Um, if you are any other trade or homeowner, just take what I said about all these tools, work out what tools you're gonna to be using the most and if it's gonna be handy for what you do.